So tell me about the experience of actually winning a Nobel Prize. What happened, uh, you know, they, they, they try to keep it very much under wraps, or who they, who's going to win, and they actually don't make the decision, the final decision, until the day of the prize, but they do that around 11 o'clock in the morning, then they try to get the word out. And so um, they don't, they, have, they hadn't really done their research because they try to call people at home, but they discovered when they consulted the directory assistants for Houston, Texas, that there were two Robert Curls in directory assistants. <laughs> the other Robert Curl has since passed away, so. But, and so they left a message on my, on my, my uh, answering machine at work, which I got about, oh no, eight or nine hours later. Uh, and then they, well, how I heard about it was uh, I got a phone call from somebody, uh, somebody who identified themselves as ABC Radio News. And they wanted to know what was my reaction to winning the Nobel Prize in chemistry. And so I was trying to be quite cagey because <laughs> I'm listening very carefully if there's somebody giggling in the background. <laughs> but anyway, I, so I, I still didn't know what I got, but uh, so I did probably, it might be legitimate, okay. Well, I was exercising at 5.45 in the morning, as I usually did when I was president, and the phone rang and I silently cursed who would be calling at this hour. It was our uh, chief of public affairs, calling to tell me that they had been informed that uh, Rick Smalley and Bob Curl had won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry. And I said, well, thank you very much. So I put the phone down. The first person I called was the chair of our board, Charles Duncan, to let him know, woke him up, that was okay with him. And then I called a previous president, Norman Hackerman, who I knew from his habits would be awake. And I, I, he answered the phone and I said, Norm, yes, we won. Okay, good. He, he knew what I was talking about. We won. And I said, what do you think, what, what do you think that's going to mean for Rice? And he said, hmm, I guess we'll be as famous in Texas now as we are in the rest of the United States. <laughs> what happened that made it legitimate, really, was I did come in and tell my wife, this is actually my sister and her husband were there, that I just received this prize. And, and so and I probably was real. And, I recall her reaction. I don't think she recalls it this way. It's something along, that's nice, dear. <laughs> <laughs> she was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so in a few minutes, uh, Bob Wilcott, who uh, uh, was uh, one, almost one of my classmates, who's a year behind me in, at Rice, pulled up in front in his car, said he heard it on the radio, and so I, uh, I believed it then. You believed it then? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For sure. And so I didn't get anything done that day that I had planned on getting done at okay. all. No, that would, that would kind of be a, <laughs> a, you know, a, a upsetting to the, to the regular order of business. Uh -huh. When did you talk to Smalley? Well, Smalley was at the, he's, he was on a, on a uh, speaking tour and he was at the University of Connecticut. Okay. And he got the word, and and uh, I don't, you know, I don't know. He was actually in this hookup. He got the word, I think, to be in, early enough to be in a hookup because there's a famous picture with me, sort of. I can't, I can't remember exactly. I think I was at a podium or something like that, and there was the big screen with Smalley looming over. Me. Oh yeah, yes, I've seen that. I've seen that. So, so, you know, big day, safe yeah. to say. Yeah. yeah, it was a big day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was a very big day. I, as I said, I really, I, nothing happened that day that I, that I had figured was going to happen. Did it feel satisfying? Well, yeah, I mean. Uh, it's just you know, hard to imagine what that would actually feel like. I mean, the well, best day I had was the day my granddaughter was born, yeah. and I felt satisfied that yeah, day. Yeah. I've never, it's kind of hard to explain. It, yes, uh, it's positive. It's a very positive experience, okay. And, uh, and, and, uh, very, and many of good things have happened as a result of this. 
Um, and I certainly am happy to get it. Satisfied is not, I mean, you know, you shouldn't have really been satisfied that you, the day your granddaughter was born because <laughs> what did you have to do with that? <laughs> Well, <laughs> something. <laughs> but, uh, well, I mean, the uh, I probably what. So I think I see what you're. I think I see what you're saying. I, I mean, what what the discovery of the, the fullerenes was an accident. We certainly had no idea that we we're going to go off and discover these molecules of carbon that no one had had. Uh, ever made before. People had thought of, all, of, of C60 and the fullerenes, but no one had ever made them. There was a synthetic organic, chem organic chemist that tried to make C60 more than but, one. Actually. But, yeah, but, but before we it was an accident. It was an I accident. mean, but yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't like an uncontrolled accident. No, no, I've no. got something to thank you for. Okay. Thank you so much for talking <laughs> to me for so long. You're welcome. And, and um, you know, I just, I just, really enjoy that you're such a rice guy. <laughs> I mean you really you really are you're you're our own guy and <laughs> and I recognize I recognize who you are. I understand how you got here. I understand what you got from here and I'm glad you came back. Yeah. Thank well, I'm you. Glad I came back too. It's been it's been great. I mean and I would have had to look for a job. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>